we'll start with what's going on in Ukraine and the effort to secure the crime scene there. And for the first time, a team of Malaysian investigators were allowed on the site of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17. Investigators joined a team of monitors from the Organization for Security and Cooperation on Europe. Their visit came just hours after separatist rebels handed the planes black boxes over to Malaysian officials. Today, a train carrying the remains of victims arrive in Kharkiv. The bodies will be transported from there to the Netherlands. And the brother of a passenger on the down Malaysian air flight said the moment he found out that his brother and sister-in-law were killed, it was an unforgettable experience. It was disbelief. I just, you know, you just don't process stuff like that. You know, how could something like this on the other side of the world um, be impacting me personally? The U.S. says they have powerful evidence that Ukraine's rebels shot down the plane with a Russian surface-to-air missile. Other governments have stopped short of accusing Russia of actually causing the crash. Meantime, down in Florida, the widow awarded billions of dollars following the death of her chain-smoking husband called the verdict a message to big tobacco and smokers. $23 billion to me still would be enough. The life is gone. A life is gone. You know, it, it, it's not coming back. It's, it's, you know, it's a message to others that are going to die from smoking cigarettes. Now that $23 billion compensatory, I'm sorry, uh, punitive damage, not compensatory damages for repayment. Robinson added that she most likely won't see much, if any, of that money. Legal experts say the punitive damage most certainly will be reduced on appeal, if not thrown out. And Florida Senator Marco Rubio says he feels for the children from Central America who are flooding our shores, but the current wave of illegals is not good for the United States. His comments came in the second part of the National Public Radio interview broadcast this morning. Rubio says other countries should help carry the load of immigrants seeking refuge from crime and gang violence. I'm not sure that we live in an era anymore where the country can absorb 60,000 people via asylum or any other process. Meaning a the million, answer is no. Sure. I mean, a million people, and, and it's, uh, I think we, it would behoove us to do what we can to help these countries improve conditions in their own country. But I would say that there are other members of the hemisphere that need to step forward and provide that as well. Senator Rubio told the public radio audience that even the law regarding Cuban immigrants should be modernized to reflect the changing landscape from the early 1960s to today. Interesting take there from Rubio, uh, particularly because he was such the public face of the Senate Gang of Eight immigration bill. And clearly, as the tide starts to turn in terms of public sentiment on this issue, Marco Rubio is going to have to play a little bit of defense. A very interesting comment there. He wants to change it to, to reflect the challenging land landscape from the early 1960s. What's your thoughts on that, John? Well, you know, if you think back to the early 1960s in Cuba and some of the stuff that was going on here with right. uh, Russia, we might be entering in that new phase here. Um, but, you know, using the term modernized uh, is important here. I mean, we are dealing with a new reality in the 21st century, um, and we've talked about the importance of securing our borders. One of the things that's really, um, you know, keeps coming back to me about this whole situation playing out in Texas uh, on the border there is that this is happening where there is a God-made border, the Rio Grande River. This is where, uh, where many of these migrants are, are choosing to come across here. And uh, we will have J.D. back, and I'm sure he'll want to address this. Uh, but with the river there and the uh, dangers that that poses, what additional security will a fence pose? And I think um, we hear Rick Perry calling for the National Guard, other folks calling for more manpower down on the border. Is that really what it's going to take? In lieu of a fence, uh, do we really need more manpower on the border right now to make this stop? And he's also saying, talking about changing the conditions within these countries, um, preventing this from happening for in the future, um, and whether that's going to have an impact as well. Well, you know, given the fact, uh, Francesca, that Congress right now seems to be stalled out on uh, the, the short-term Band-Aid fix for this issue, uh, the supplemental funding request the president has talked about, and then also the companion Republican bill, the Corn and Cuellar bill, very little movement, uh, at least in the public, on that issue right here. I don't know, I don't know how we can expect to uh, implement changes for those native countries there in Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, some of the most unsavory countries in the world in terms of economic uh, and security conditions. I don't think there's going to be one firm answer for each of these places, John. I believe it's going to be uh, something that's going to be variable between. You know, there is uh, you know, one thing here that, we, that history proves may give us some hope on the issue of, of the uh, supplemental immigration fix, and not saying necessarily that the $4.7 or the president's request is the answer here, but we know Congress has one of those hard deadlines coming right. up here with the August recess yes. uh, 
on the horizon here. And as we've seen in the past, things that seem like they cannot get fixed, um, like uh, the debt ceiling and other issues like that, when Congress is going home for somewhat of a prolonged vacation or uh, in district work session, as JD likes to call it, uh, they do seem to have a little bit more motivation to get something done. Yeah. Does that give you any hope uh, that we could see some sort of fix? Because as we've heard Republicans and Democrats alike say, the longer we wait to fix this most urgent emerging issue, the right. more it's going to cost us. Well, I think regardless, this is going to be a hot topic for election season. Uh, I think we all know that. But as you said, it does seem to be somewhat dead within Congress right now. So let's hope that some action is taken. Some action is better than no action at this point. Yes, and of course what we heard there from Rubio, and we were hoping to have, we have an interview scheduled with Marco Rubio here on Newsmax TV coming up later this week, uh, I believe tomorrow, so we can get some more information from him on this. But of course what the Republicans are trying to do here is talk about the compassionate side of this argument, making sure that the uh, welfare of these kids is, is, is upheld here, but also dealing with the security issue. And can he still bridge that careful gap? Careful balance, careful balance. Very delicate balance, the immigration issue. One of the hot button issues we continue to talk about here on America's Forum and on Newsmax TV and on Newsmax.com. You can always reach out to us and give us your comments on the latest situation. What do you think about Rick Perry sending these National Guard troops to the border? What do you think about Marco Rubio's comments? We'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us on Twitter at Newsmax TV, the hashtag America's Forum. Find us on Facebook, facebook.tv.com or Facebook.com backslash Newsmax TV.